No shame on it, host it, it's Christian Hina, ooh, ooh, on a victory, ooh, ooh. The host in the sweater, he has grown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, he be, he become my salvation. He is my God and I will glorify him, my Father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen's captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The tempest covered them, they sink to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has judged the enemy in peace. Hi there, I'm Aaron, Moses and Aaron's sister. I'm here to tell you all about the life of Israelites in Egypt under the rule of Pharaoh. But first, let's see what's in our mystery treasure box. It's a staff. Both my brothers had rods like this one when they visited Pharaoh. God helped them do incredible miracles with them. In Egypt, all Israelites were called Hebrews and were considered slaves, including myself, and out of the burning boats in the desert. He asked him to return to Egypt and convince Pharaoh to be all of us. Although he, he had his, our brother Aaron beside him, and even though God had promised to help him, Moses was still worried. And he had every reason to worry. Moses had run away from Egypt, afraid of what would happen to him for killing an Egyptian who was being cruel to an Israelite slave. And now God wanted him to go back and to do and to go right up to Pharaoh, the guy with all the power in Egypt, to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. Moses knew Pharaoh wasn't going to like that. But even though he knew he would get him in trouble, Pharaoh, Moses obeyed God. Moses and Aaron traveled to Egypt and went to see Pharaoh. Here is Moses and Aaron right, right now. They are, have already spoken to the Israelites to let them know what God plans to do. Pharaoh the God of Israel says, let my people go. They may celebrate your feast to me in the wilderness. Who is that God that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know God. If we do not let his people go, the God of the Hebrews will fall upon us with plagues or with the sword. Because you want to take the people away from their work, I will assume they are all lazy, so I will make them work even harder. And if they don't, they will be beaten. Then, then the Israelites realized they were in big trouble. They went straight to Moses and Aaron and said, look what you've done. You you have made Pharaoh and his men mad at us. They're going to kill us. Is this why you sent me to the Pharaoh? Ever since I did, he has brought more trouble on your people. Your people need you to rescue them. Wait till you see what I will do. Because of my power and might, Pharaoh will let my people go. Years ago, I made a promise to give the Israelites the land of the Can, the land of Canaan. More than that, I have, prom I have heard the cries of the Israelites and I care about them. I remember my promise. Tell the Israelites that I will rescue them from slavery in Egypt. I will take them as my own people and be their God. Moses did exactly what God told him to do, but the Israelites didn't listen. They were sad and tired from working so hard. It was it as if they had no hope left in him. Moses must be feeling like an absolute failure. But that was not going to stop God from keeping his promise. God and God told Moses to go back to Pharaoh and tell him to let the Israelites go again. Moses and Aaron obeyed, and, but Pharaoh still refused to obey God. He thought his own power and the power of the gods he worshipped were stronger than the power of God of Moses and the one true God. Pharaoh, you saw myself become a snake. My magicians did the same thing. Oh, well, my snake ate your snake. This is so you will know God's power. That does not change my mind. God says, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will turn the Nile's water into blood. It will stink and it will be undrinkable. The river turned to blood. All the fish died and the Egyptians had no water to drink. After seven days, Moses and Aaron went back to Pharaoh. They told him, God wants you to let his people worship him. But Pharaoh still refused. He wasn't impressed. After all, his, his own magicians had also turned the water into blood.
Pharaoh, the Lord says, let my people go, that they may serve me. If you refuse, I will smite your country with frogs. No! So God sent frogs, millions of them. Frogs hopped, cropped all over Egypt. They were frogs in the house, in the kitchen pots, in garden, and even in the palace. But once again, the Egyptian magicians did the same thing. The Pharaoh hated frogs. The Pharaoh actually changed his mind. He told Moses to pray to get to God to get rid of the frogs, and he would let the Israelites go. So Moses prayed, and God got rid of the Israelites. But as soon as they were gone, Pharaoh changed his mind. He decided not to send the Israelites free. Moses went back to the Pharaoh to talk. If we do not let let God's people go, then there will be insects like lice in all the land. Then God sent insects like lice to Egypt. They were everywhere. And this time, the Egyptian magicians could not produce even one insect. The lice made all the Egyptians and the animals miserable. But Pharaoh still wouldn't obey. Do not let the people go. Behold, I will send swarms of flies. God kept sending flies to the land of Egypt. After the flies, then the livestock belong, belonging to the Egyptians got sick, dying while the livestock belonging to the Israelites stayed well. The next day there came a plague of boils, painful sores that covered the Egyptians and their animals. But the Israelites didn't have insects or flies where they lived. God protected his people from the plague. Their animals didn't die. None of the Israelites had even one boil. Each time there was a new plague, Pharaoh would promise to let God's people go if Moses would make it stop. And certainly every time, Moses would pray to God to end the plagues, but every time Pharaoh would go back on his word. So God would send more plagues. Next, there was a terrible hailstorm in Egypt, but not where the Israelites lived. Hail is hard balls of ice that fall from the sky. The hail that beat down everything growing in the field and knocked up fruit and leaves from all the trees. Pharaoh, tell, let Moses take his people and go so that, they, so that these horrible plagues will stop. We are all suffering so much. Tell your God to stop the storm. I have sinned by not obeying him and letting the Israelites go. This time I really will let them go. So God, so Moses prayed to God to stop the hailstorm. And God stopped the thunder, lightning, and hail. And what happened? Well, Pharaoh changed his mind, of course. He didn't free the Israelite slaves. Moses and Aaron went back again to see Pharaoh and to give him the, a message from God. God has said that you must let his people go, men, women, and children, so they can worship him. Otherwise, he will send locusts on the land. Fine, fine, you may take the men, men and go. Leave now. But this was not what God had asked. He did not just want the men. He wanted all his people. Because Pharaoh would not obey God's command, God sent a huge number of locusts to Egypt. Locusts are insects like grasshoppers. They ate everything in Egypt. Plants, fruit, leaves, vegetables, everything. The, the locusts ate all my crops, my family, and I was starved to death. Please make it stop. I sinned against you, God. I will let the children of Israel go. What do you think happened? The same thing happened again. Moses prayed to God to get rid of the locusts. And once they were gone, Pharaoh changed his mind again. So once again, God sent a plague to Egypt. This time, darkness covered the land for three days. Not just any darkness, but darkness so dark it could be felt. But the Israelite people had light where they lived. Once again, Pharaoh told Moses he could take the Israelites away from Egypt. And once again, Pharaoh changed his mind. You cannot take the Israel. You cannot take the Israel. I want you to leave, Moses. I never want to see your face again. You will die. Fine, you won't see me again. Pharaoh thinks he has won. There has been nine plagues so far, but there was one final plague, and it seems like the worst of them all. The Lord has told me after this plague, Pharaoh will let the people go. 
free once and for all. God also said to tell the Israelites to ask the Egyptian people for anything made of silver or gold. God will make sure the Egyptians will give his people everything they asked for. God said that the final plague would be the worst of them all. God told me to deliver a message to Pharaoh. He said that around midnight, every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the Pharaoh's firstborn son to the firstborn son of the, of the slave girl, and even the firstborn of the cattle will die. There will be sadness in Egypt, unlike any that has been seen uh, before. Before or will be seen again, but every Israelite son will be safe. God says that this will be the final plague and that after this, Pharaoh will let God's people go. God gave us some very special instructions to tell the, for the Israelites so that to follow, so that they will be safe from the final plague. God said, tell told the Israelites that the man in charge of each family is to take one perfect year old lamb male lamb and kill it. After killing the lamb, take some of its blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the house. Roast the meat over the fire. That night in the fam that night the family will eat the meat along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. If you have anything left, burn if you have anything left over, burn it. And where the people eat, they are to wear their clothes tucked under your bells, your sandals under your feet, and your staff in your hand. Like, they are ready to leave on a trip at any moment. Tell them to eat quickly. It is the Lord's Passover. The reason God called it Passover is because God's plan was on that same night he would have every first birth firstborn male son in Egypt killed, but the lamb's blood on the door frames will be a sign that God's people live in that house and death will pass over that house and move through Egypt.